And he has news from the Indian state of Karnataka, which has become the leader in renewable energy production in India. But while it is a proud moment for the South Indian state, the road ahead in renewable energy dependency is certainly long. Vyond's Nishchita Virinder brings us more on this story. In some good news for the South Indian state of Karnataka, it has topped the list of cities in the country in production of renewable energy. Today, Karnataka stands with a total capacity of 12,452 megawatts of renewable energy power, dethroning neighboring Tamil Nadu from the top spot. Added to that, the state has also overtaken global leaders like Denmark and Netherlands in the process. 41% of Karnataka's renewable energy comes from solar energy, 38% comes from wind, 13% from cogeneration, 7% from small hydro, and 1% from biomass. At present, now our state Karnataka is the number one in the entire country. Total renewable capacity is around 12,340, around 12,400 megawatts, mm -hmm. including solar, wind, and small hydro, biogas, all these things put together. Mm -hmm. Solar, uh, solar in solar also is a number one in the country. Mm -hmm. Total as a renewable is also as a number one in the country. Mm -hmm. In solar also we are number one in the country. Do experts peg that nearly 27% of Karnataka's energy requirements is being met through renewable sources? The Renewable Energy Department says that during cooler months, the figure is close to 40%. While wind energy capacity was slowly developed over the last decade, close to 5 gigawatts was added through solar energy in the last one year alone. Of course, we still depend largely on coal. Uh, around 10 gigawatt of coal is giving us around 50% of our energy. But that equation can change, right? Uh, because of inherent challenges that conventional energy is posing with respect to you know, Karnataka not having coal reserves, right? So we have to depend on other states for buying coal power or you know to get coal for our power plants, and that's increasingly becoming a, a big challenge for you know to within the state dynamics. Karnataka has one of the largest solar parks in the world with a planned capacity of 2,000 megawatts. The administration has so far managed to successfully complete 600 megawatts at Pavagada in the state's Tumku district. But there's more to it than just power generation. Environmentalists have been critical of the government for cheaply leasing out fertile agricultural land instead of acquiring waste drylands for the park. The park, while providing green energy, has destroyed the land and biodiversity of the region, say renowned environmentalists. I think there's a massive uh, environmental and social impact uh, with this utility scale solar power plants mm -hmm. and also wind farms uh, and also the hybrid ones. Uh, because everyone assumes that solar is clean because you don't see smoke, oh, yes. you don't see ash, mm -hmm. you don't see dams, you don't see what, you know, forests are much, right? But what people don't realize is that thousands and thousands of acres of farmland and pastoral land is being diverted to solar parks. Also while Karnataka can pride itself for beating countries like Denmark and Netherlands, experts feel that it's time to aim higher as India is one of the top three investors in renewable energy production. And Karnataka has more power generation in, from the hydro source than Tamil Nadu. So had it been done, they could have evacuated more power from wind in Tamil Nadu and could have supply to the other states also. This also can be now ex the experimented in the, uh, the in all India scenario by inter integrating the, the grid from north, south, west and the south. And the, whenever there is a high potential, high generation of uh, renewable energy sources, immediately they can operate the uh, the, the gas plants as well as the hydro plants. Well, if everything goes as per plan, then in the next 10 years, close to 60% of Karnataka's energy requirement will be met through renewable energy. While the Karnataka government certainly deserves a pat on the back for this one, environmentalists have warned that the government should look at more sustainable ways of producing renewable energy by using waste or dried lands instead of permanently damaging fertile agricultural fields that could have long long-term implications. With Siddharth in Chennai and video journalist Chandan in Bengaluru, Nishita Virendra, we are.